Hi, and welcome to the fifth episode of Learning to Edit in DaVinci Resolve. My name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to look at working with audio. So over the next few minutes, we're going to look at clip and track techniques. We're going to look at levels, mixing, audio effects, channel mapping. But first of all, let's have a look how we actually get audio onto the timeline. So as we know, with video, it works on a priority basis. So video two has priority over video one. The audio tracks are all mixed together. So each track is mixed for a final output. So there is no priority. So here's the audio tracks, audio one, audio two, audio three, and we can add as many of these as we like. And all we have to do is edit in very similar to how we did with video. So let's take a look at this shot here. I really like helping those bikes. So what we can do with this shot is enhance it by adding a little bit of audio. So let's go to the beginning. I'm going to press X, which gives us a mark in and mark out on this clip. So we've highlighted an area. And what I want to do is bring in this clip here. And I'm just going to do a mark in. So we're going to do a simple three point edit. Scraping dirt off the bike. So let's just do a mark in about there. And the mark out is determined by the timeline. Now, I don't want this clip to overwrite this interview. So what I need to do is route that to audio track two, switch it on and press F10 to overwrite that in. And there we go. I really like helping those bikes that still have. So now we have a little bit of extra audio to help this shot. So bringing audio clips down to the timeline is exactly the same techniques as video. So let's look at channel mapping. Each audio track on the timeline has its own properties. So by default, it's stereo, but you can change that by right clicking and saying change track type to stereo, mono, 5.1 or adaptive. So let's mark an interview clip up. Naysayer, they're like, oh, you can't balance on two wheels like that. That'll never work and stuff like that. Uh so audio one's now a mono track. Let's bring the clip down. Let's play that back. Balance on two wheels like that, that'll never work. So this work clip's now playing like back in mono, but it's playing both channels. If we go to clip attributes, so right click up here, clip attributes, and select the audio, you could actually take out channel two completely and assign it to be channel one. And that would remove the second mic. And so this clip is now playing channel one out of both output channels. Else, uh, but the bicycle has stayed true. And I really... Now that change we've just made in the clip attributes won't affect this clip on the timeline. So let's have a look at adjusting audio levels now. We've got a soundtrack running through the entire piece here. It's on mute at the moment, so I'll just click here to unmute. And let's have a listen. My passion is really reflected in my work. So as you can tell, it's a little bit loud in the mix here underneath that interview. So we just want to do a quick basic level mix. As I come down onto the clip, you see a white line. That's your level indicator. So my mouse changes automatically, and I can push the volume up or down by simply grabbing. That's one way. We can also do that with the clip mixer. So over here, select clip mixer, and we're on audio track three. So as I move this, you see that white line moving up and down for the entire clip. So let's play that back. My passion is really reflected in my work in that I, I really like to so really easy to control your clip levels. If you put your mouse over a clip, you'll see little white handles. This allows me to do a fade in just by dragging like this. So listen to this. And the further you pull it, obviously, the slower the fade in. So let's add a transition. I'm just going to mute the soundtrack and the interview tracks. And I'm going to put a transition between these two clips here. So let's have a quick listen. No, it's okay. And the cut's quite hard on the audio. So let's just zoom in here. So it's Command Plus. And what we can do is go to our effects library. And you see at the top here, we've got some audio transitions. So I'm just going to take a crossfade. And I can either drag and drop this down. Or if I undo that, what I can also do is highlight and press Command T. And that adds a transition. Command T will add a transition to video and audio. If you press Shift T, it will only apply a transition to audio. So if I highlight the crossfade and open up the inspector, and now we can easily edit the duration or the style or the alignment. So it's really easy. Let's have a listen. So it's just a little bit smoother between the two now. You can add effects to multiple clips by simply lassoing. So if I click on all these, and press Command T. 
you see I get a crossfade across the whole selection. So let's look at keyframing. It's really simple. Let's put on our soundtrack, put on our interview again, and just have a quick listen here. I really like, I like the challenge. I like to try to fix my So obviously we need to bring the level of the soundtrack down a little bit. So we can add a keyframe at the start of the interview. So just click on the inspector and choose volume. My passion is really Then any adjustments I make now are automatically keyframed. My passion is really reflected in my work in the Let's add another one here. And the other way to add keyframes is to use the Alt key on your keyboard. So just click, and then you could adjust the volume up and down with your mouse. So we could make the level come up again here. Just Alt, click. And then just lift my level up there. Necessarily be importing brand new bikes from China. So it's much better. So it's really easy to add keyframes. If you use these square bracket keys, you can jump between keyframes. So we can also do a real-time audio mix using the faders. So at the moment we're in the clip faders, and if we change from read to latch mode, it will record our movements as we move the fader. So watch this. Life left in them. We don't need to necessarily be importing brand new bikes from China. And that's recorded all those movements. Now if we undo that, we can also do this at track level. So switch from clip to track. And what this does is allow us to adjust the level of the entire track. So it doesn't matter how many clips are on there, they'll all be adjusted. So for example, we wanted to raise the level of the interview on track one. We can just push up here. And we could lower the overall level of the soundtrack. And that's affecting all the clips on those tracks. Necessarily be importing brand new bikes from China. The track mixer also determines how many channels output you're going to have. So when it's set to two, that's a stereo output, but you can change that by using the pull down here. What you then do is go to each individual track on the timeline and assign it an output. So at the minute audio one is going to one and two, audio channel two, might, you might want to route it out to channels three and four, so they're separate. It's quite common for a broadcast delivery to have to separate the channels out. So the last thing to look at is the plugins. If we go over to our audio effects here, let's just mute the soundtrack. For a moment. You see here we've got a whole load of plugins. So Resolve supports VST and Isotope plugins and the Mac also supports AU plugins. And there's a whole load of stuff in here. So we've got graphic equalizers, compressors, all that sort of thing. And basically you just drag and drop. So let's bring in a graphic EQ. I'm going to drop it onto the interview clip. Now if I highlight it and go to my inspector, you can see the graphic equalizer listed there. Now it's quite tricky to use in here because there's a lot of parameters in there. So if you see this icon in the inspector, just click it and it will open up a dedicated GUI for that particular effect. So now we can add a little bass to this interview by boosting these lower frequencies. And you can play that back in real time. Left in them. We don't need to necessarily be importing brand new bikes from China. And that's done. Now what we want to do, once that's set, is we want to copy that parameter to the other clips. So all the other interview would need the same EQ. So if we copy by pressing Command C and then highlight the other interviews and then simply pressing Alt V will paste the attributes. So if we click down here you see we've got three clips highlighted and if we go down to Audio Attributes we don't want the volume or the pan but we do want the plugins. Say Apply and all these clips now have the same graphic EQ properties. They've carried people all over the place. So that's really easy to do. So now you should all be enlightened with audio knowledge and my next tutorial is looking into multicam editing in DaVinci Resolve. Thanks for listening.